Hey there, how's it going? Gabriel here. I'm here in a beautiful Jasper National Park where the sun is just starting to go down. It's kind of uh, um, blasting me at the moment, but the light's going to change within the next few minutes as the sun goes down behind a uh, hill there. So this video is titled, Get Real About the New Age. And this is going to be based on an article that I just wrote and published on my blog. Um, I'm going to start writing on my blog a little more regularly, so I'll post a link down below this video to uh, the article that I just wrote. But I'm going to try my best to encapsulate that article, which packed a lot of information into uh, about five or six pages there. So this is basically a response to people who um, I've been coming across lately who are bashing the New Age movement. And these are people who are um, alternatively spiritually minded those who don't subscribe to the mainstream religious views, whether, whether uh, you're talking about Christianity or Islam or Buddhism or Hinduism or Judaism. So people who, who have a spiritual outlook and are seeking ways to, to evolve themselves, to come to greater awareness and self-knowledge um, outside of the context of the mainstream religions, who are bashing the New Age movement and saying, uh, you know, that it's all it's all airy fairy and it's all ungrounded and it's and it's disconnected from reality and people have their their head in the clouds and they're all just about you know worshiping their crystals and and uh, talking to their friends from another galaxy and and are um, you know not dealing with the real problems of the world and and uh, and there's no real substance to it etc etc and I really think that this is a very generalized cliche perspective on what the New Age movement is is actually about and is actually um, uh, offering humanity at this time and so I want to speak to uh, you know those who are disparaging the New Age movement and saying it's all a bunch of BS and it's all just you know money scammers and and uh, you know, people fake channeling just to make a buck, and 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 all this stuff. Because personally, I don't think that that is that is the truth of what is going on here. So I wanted to first of all talk about what you know, what are the origins of the new age of this concept of a new age, because the new age is not a new concept. Remember back in the '60s, whether you were there or not, which I wasn't. Um, but uh, many of us have seen at least some clip of the uh, musical hair in which they're singing about the dawning of the age of Aquarius. And so in the 60s there was a, a uh, realization of there is a new age dawning, the age of Aquarius is coming. And this is absolutely factually correct. And it is actually quite a fascinating paradigm of, of this concept of the, the uh, various ages. And this concept of the ages is actually quite likely the oldest spiritual concept in human history. This, this is not something that was invented by the hippies in the 60s. The concept of the ages is uh, based around the zodiac, the, the 12 signs of the zodiac. So for example, I was born April 30th, so I'm a Taurus. Most of us know what our astrological sign is. This dynamic of the, the signs of the zodiac is based on the constellations in the, in the night sky. Each of the signs of the zodiac corresponds with a, uh, a constellation of stars in the night sky. And the different ages are based on which of these 12 uh, major constellations is prominent in the night sky during that age. And these ages last for more than 2,000 years. So the reason that Jesus, for example, um, the, the symbol that, that Christians often use to uh, equate to Jesus is a fish, is because the fish represents the zodiacal age of Pisces, and Jesus, the coming of Jesus, corresponded with the beginning of the age of Pisces. Now, there is no specific beginning and ending point of these zodiacal ages, 
because there isn't a, a, uh, a nice, neat uh, beginning and ending point of when one constellation begins and when the other constellation ends. Now, uh, what determines the ages is, is getting into a little bit of technical astronomy, which I'm not very technical about, but um, basically it is determined based on the, the, uh, the rising of the sun in the east, which constellation the sun is rising into. So that shifts, that changes very, very slowly. Which constellation the sun would be rising into in the east? And if I'm getting that a little bit wrong, then uh, feel free to correct me on that. But that's the basic idea: is, it, is it's based on um, uh, the shifting of the stars in in the sky, which is a phenomenon which takes 26,000 years to go through the cycle. And so this concept of of these different ages is thousands and thousands of years old. Um, and it is based on a real astronomical phenomenon. So this concept of, of stars shifting in the sky it isn't, isn't some sort of a, you know, new agey, airy-fairy kind of thing. This is a real astronomical phenomenon which is known by astronomers and scientists. And it is absolutely, uh, absolutely valid and occurring. Through the course of 26,000 years, then the, uh, the arrangement of the stars in, this, in the sky, obviously the stars themselves aren't changing, it's just from Earth's perspective, the stars are ever so, so slowly shifting. And so this period of 26,000 years has been sectioned out into these 12 different ages based around the signs of the zodiac. And what causes this shifting in the sky is believed to be uh, a result of some sort of a wobble in Earth's axis as it's rotating, and then there's some kind of a wobble there that, that creates a, a, uh, a shifting in perspective relative to Earth of the night sky. And so that's what causes what is known as the Great Year, which is uh, this, um, this cycle of uh, roughly 26,000 years. Uh, it is actually 25,920 years divided by 12 makes 2,160. So each of these ages is 2,160 years long. There is an alternative theory here, which I'll just throw out there as quickly as I can, being researched by Walter Cruttenden, an astronomer, who is exploring the possibility that this, uh, this shifting of the stars in the night sky from Earth's, Earth's perspective is in fact caused by a completely different phenomenon, which is that of Earth rotating around another star, the entire solar system, our sun rotating around another star, so having a, a massive ellipt elliptical orbit around another star somewhere out there. It's such a huge orbit that we're a long ways away from it at this point. And, and it is the movement of our solar system through the universe, through our galaxy, that creates this differing perspective of the stars as we see them from Earth. So feel free to check out Walter Cruttenden. It is, it is def definitely a very uh, alternative, controversial theory which, which isn't uh, gaining any kind of uh, traction in the mainstream astronomical um, scientific community. So um, one other thing that I'll just mention here really quick is that these, uh, these signs of the, the zodiac and these ages is thousands of years old, this concept. And the Sphinx in Egypt may actually be um, a sign of the uh, age of Leo. Now, this a sphinx, the, the, the mythical uh, beast of the sphinx, is a lion's body with a man's head. So that's what a sphinx is, and the sphinx in Egypt is a depiction of a sphinx. However, it is believed by some, by alternative Egyptologists, that the sphinx in Egypt, which rests on the Giza Plateau um, outside Cairo along with the Great Pyramids, there are alterna alternative Egyptologists who believe that the head of the Sphinx may have originally actually been a lion. If you look at the Sphinx, then its head, which is a man's head, is rather small in proportion to the body, the lion's body. And so it is asserted by some that, that uh, the Sphinx was actually originally just a lion, and then Sometime later, one of the Egyptian pharaohs came along 
and said, you know what, I think my head would look a lot better on that there lion. So just to, uh, you know, um, uh, put my place in history, I want some people to go out there and carve down that lion's head so that it looks like my head, and then I will be forever um, remembered as the, as the pharaoh who um, the Sphinx was created for. So they are suggesting that originally the Sphinx was actually just a lion and that it may have been uh, created in, in commemoration or, or celebration of the age of Leo, the age of the lion, which occurred around 10,500 BC to 8,000 BC. So, uh, you know, starting 12,000 years ago. So that just gives you a quick indication of how far back these um, ages of the zodiac may go. So, point being, the concept of the new age is not a new concept. We are currently somewhere on the cusp between the ages of Pisces and the ages of Aquarius. So a new age is in fact dawning. Um, where exactly it begins is a matter of debate, but we are uh, moving into the age of Aquarius.